I am going to be doing a quick video on how to use a shot marker in the rain. Now, shot marker in and, in and of itself is fairly water resistant. Uh, as long as you don't have any of the cable connections facing up into the rain, or if you're using, uh, like you don't wanna use any of the um, couplers in the rain because those aren't watertight. But the system itself will function just fine in the rain unless you're getting standing water on the sensors, which you know occasionally happens. Now, for most people, this is never an issue. Most clubs don't have covered shooting. They don't actively <laughs> work to shoot in rain conditions. I, however, shoot under a large covered uh, building with you know upwards of 50 guys every night. Uh, we shoot you know usually 62, 63 times a year at 600 yards, and that means rain, snow, wind, whatever. So I'm going to be showing you something that works in my experience. It doesn't mean that it's the right fix for everybody. And if you experience problems with your shot marker because of a weather related problem, I would highly recommend that you reach out to shot marker first. Adam is absolutely amazing with his customer service and is dedicated to making sure that his product works. I am in no way sponsored by him. I pay for all my products um, that you see in my shot marker stuff. Uh, I just have worked with him long enough that I know how he is with his customer service. And I think, you know, by now the shot markers have been around long enough that people have a generally good feeling about using them and a general trust in them. But there are some strange weather conditions that can cause a problem. So I'm going to show you how we've resolved that at my club and the testing that we've done so that I have faith and can, you know, tell my members that I have faith in uh, the shot placements during uh, really foul weather. So take a look at this video. I hope it helps somebody out there. But again, it is not a fix-all. It is not something that should be done to a general shot marker that's working fine. Um, this is a 1% or less problem. And, and again, I cannot emphasize enough that if you have some weird anomaly with your shot marker, you really should reach out to shot marker first. So other than that, here it goes. Hope you enjoy. All right, so we shoot in all kinds of horrible weather here. Uh, we shoot 62, 63 times a year, rain, snow, blowing wind. And we're able to do it because we have figured out that by rotating our lower sensors downward, so they are in the same orientation as the upper sensors, that we can alleviate a lot of the water issues uh, with the sensor. And we've tried, you know, uh, all different kinds of alternatives. And, you know, they just, we haven't had good success. This is what's worked for us. And I know there's a lot of people that are skeptical about it. A lot of the guys in my group are skeptical about it. We have put nearly 20,000 rounds over these targets in this orientation now. And I'm going to show you how I know that it works just fine. So how do you rotate the sensors? Well, we're actually going to take the base off of the sensor and turn it because we want it to stay in the correct orientation with the plug facing down. We just want this to physically turn. So <clears throat> the nice thing is that's magnetic. So you have a nice little built-in screw holder. I've done these at the range and you just kind of pull it out and they zip right to that magnet at least most of the time okay. and then <clears throat> we've got the plug at the bottom okay so the plug is down here right and we want to rotate this this way so that it's the same as the red and blue that correspond above and then we're just going to screw it together Putting the screws back, you do have to fight the magnet a little bit. Now look, I'll be honest. I have no idea, you know, how or if this affects any kind of warranty on the actual sensor. I've had these set up for a long time like this. And uh, I just moved these back so that I could show you again how, how this works. So, uh, so the orange one matches. 
So here's my red. So my red and my orange, oops, my orange and my red now match in orientation. And now I'm gonna do my green one. And I will say during the summers, um, you know, you could conceivably look at changing them back. So I moved these back just to show you, but okay, so here's, here's the sensor. And again, we wanna come this way with it so that it matches the, the blue one above it. And you know, this just for us shooting in all kinds of inclement weather, because, you know, I don't care what the weather's like, we're going to shoot. And that's, I mean, we've shot in rainstorms, snow showers, I mean, everything. Um, howling wind. And while the wind really, this doesn't really do anything for the wind, when you've got driving rain or pouring rain coming down on you, or especially drizzly rain, I'll say, we almost have more problems with the drizzly rain. But, okay, so now this one is set up that way. So when these are in their respective hubs they still sit correctly so there you still got you've still got the sensor with the with the cord out the bottom and that's important at one time we had looked at changing these uh, by leaving the sensor and then rotating the actual cup the problem was then the rain could get in from the side and drip onto the cord so it was important for us to test the cord out the bottom and rotating the sensor that way so here's what we've got. We have two complete shot marker systems mirroring each other. We have the rotated sensor and then a correctly oriented sensor in the bottom here. And then at the same time, I have two proper red and two proper blues. And then we're running two brains and we're gonna go ahead and be running two tablets recording all of the impacts going through at the exact same time. And hopefully this will help you understand that while there might be some very, very minor differences, this is absolutely uh, the best way that I have found to overcome weather issues not getting on the sensors. Now we've tried, um, I did little rain shields that we had over it using um, like a leveler blind. Uh, we've used plastic cones, plastic cups, we've used foam, uh, like pool noodle material. All of them have obstructed the sonic signal coming through this is the only system we've used that has appeared to be virtually uninterrupted. So let's head up to the line, let's send some rounds through and uh, let's have some fun with it. So here's what we are gonna do. We are actually shooting at two sets of shot markers while I do my seating depth test. And uh, uh, it should go fine. I mean, we're just, uh, we're gonna see what it looks like uh, just to show what happens. And uh, the, the nice thing is I'm just doing a seating depth test during this. So uh, you'll probably see this video twice, one on the seating depth test video and then another one on the shot marker, but it makes for good TV. So let's have some fun with it. Uh, now, normally I would shoot all around the board. Uh, this time I'm going to be shooting uh, just each three shot string and then saving each three shot string at a time. So here we go. Uh, let's have some fun. So just over three quarters of an inch vertical there. Either way we look at it, one inch group. So a third of a minute group at 300. And even for the horrible conditions, it's just, you know, it's not horrible like rattlesnake horrible. It's just not great for testing. So uh, anyway, looks like this is what we're gonna run tomorrow and see how that goes. <laughs> 